Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Crema Media Senior Contributing Editor Keith Campbell attended the International Air Transport Association Africa Regional Conference in Santon recently and joins me in studio to tell us what transpired. Hi Keith. Hi. Ghana has said that it's interested in further expanding its aviation infrastructure and starting a national carrier. How does it intend to go about doing this and what are its aims? Well, let's start with the aims first. Uh, the country wants to make itself uh, a major hub for aviation, commercial aviation in Africa, particularly West Africa, if not the major hub in West Africa. So that's the aim. And through that, to promote the economy, to increase jobs, to diversify the economy and so on. And remember, of course, that Ghana has a rapidly growing oil sector, so there will be considerable uh, increase in demand for air transport access to and from Ghana in the coming years. Now, they're considering, uh, not considering, they're planning to build new airports, and they are planning to uh, re-establish a national airline. Now, there are about five airlines actually operating in Ghana at the moment, but they're all domestic carriers. Ghana has no national in, uh, airline flying international routes. Now, the thing is, uh, the way they want to go, both for the infrastructure and the airline, is public-private partnerships, uh, in which there'll be uh, state will have a shareholding and private sector partners will have a shareholding. Uh, from the airline point of view, what is interesting is Ghana used to have a state-owned national airline and eventually it was closed down because it became such a massive drain on the Treasury. And as a result of this, the Ghanaian government's view is that it shouldn't be involved in running airlines anymore. So though the national carrier is intended to be a public-private partnership, the Ghanaian government is going to be very happy to have only a small shareholding in the company, which is likely to be predominantly private sector. And the Ebola virus is a big concern at the moment in West Africa. What is IATA's um, view on this? Well, uh, the view of IATA is uh, that people should listen to the guidance and advice of the World Health Organization. The World Health Organization are the experts on diseases like this and how to handle them how to deal with them, and the World Health Organization currently says that air transport and air transport hubs like airports are not uh, serious uh, risk areas for the transmission of, uh, of the Ebola virus. Uh, the uh, Ebola is a, an awful disease, but it's actually quite difficult to contract. And you can sit next to somebody with Ebola and not get the disease. Uh, also, uh, I I uh, IATA's Vice President of Africa, Rafael Gucci, pointed out, airlines actually have experience in tra and training in how to handle highly infectious and d dangerous diseases, because Ebola is not the only uh, threat that uh, can emerge. We've had the concerns uh, in Asia in recent years with bird flu. So there are procedures in place to isolate passengers, uh, to um, protect the, the uh, rest of the passengers, and if need be, to disinfect an entire airliner afterwards. So basically it's don't panic, listen to the World Health Organization, and they're saying that you don't have to be scared about being in an airplane traveling to or from West Africa. And in terms of air safety, which is a big problem in Africa, are there any signs of improvement? Well, that was one of the most encouraging uh, bits of information uh, pointed out at the conference. There's been quite a dramatic improvement in air safety in Africa between 2012 and 2013. The improvement is actually to the tune of 55.4% uh, in terms of what are called Western built uh, hull loss accidents. That is, an airliner designed and built in the Western world, you know, Boeing, Airbus, Embraer, 
Bombardier and smaller uh, airline companies like ATR and so on. Um, and her losses when the pin is completely written off. Uh, and as I say, the drop in that has uh, from 2012 to 2013 has been 55.4 percent. If you take aircraft for operating in Africa from all manufacturers all over the world, the, the fall actually averages out at uh, still impressive 50 percent. So significant advance. A lot of the credit is given to what is called the IATA Operational Safety Audit, or the IOSA, which helps airlines to uh, improve their standards of operation and maintenance. And in Africa, airlines have gone through uh, the IOSA are performing, uh, in terms of safety, seven times better than those airlines which have not gone through uh, IOSA. And there was actually a representative, uh, an advisor to the Latin America and Caribbean Airlines Association who spoke at the conference who said that IOSA had made a dramatic impact on safety in the Latin American Caribbean region where the accident rate was now below the world average. Uh, Latin America is also one of the difficult areas in the world in which to fly because you've got high mountains, very high mountains, the Andes, you've got huge stretches of jungle, uh, you have got enormous empty spaces with very little in the way of air traffic control. Uh, and the imp implementation of AOSA had a dramatic effect on air safety there. And it's looking like it's having a dramatic effect on air safety in Africa. And there is an agreement uh, to among airlines in the region to uh, try and make the adoption of the EOSA universal in Africa. And that should really improve the situation. Thanks, Keith. This is the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.